to give. Captain Tavares, altitude is imperative to forging a stable connection with the Prime Resonator in Theopolis. Power source is equally vital. Locate a fissure in the mountainside and lower a conductive cable into it. The deeper, the better. It will take an immense amount of thaumaturgical energy to execute the successful disintegration and transmission of objects, both inanimate and animate, between Highgate and Theopolis. For that kind of power, we must tap the origin. I needn't remind you of the consequences should either of those elements prove deficient. That is why I would like you, Tavares, to be the first to test the resonator once it is operational. Accountability is a perfect counterweight to ambition. High Templar Dominus.
have nothing more to give. Everything I've done, it took an Oriathan to get these slaves up off their shackled asses and fighting. I guess the Templar should have treated their lessers better than their slaves, eh? Well, I'm not about to turn down a gift from Kitava. If he wants slave and outcast to join hands, then let's remind these Templar that they're flesh and blood, just like us. Sula Makora is what they call me. I'm what passes for a chief around here. Well, I put the steel in their hands. I tell them where to stab, where to run, where to die. If that doesn't make me a chief, what does, eh? Blood isn't the only currency we need to earn to buy our freedom. We can kill all the Templar mongrels we like out there. It won't matter a damn if we don't get inside their stronghold, the Templar Courts. Might as well put my bloody chains back on right now. Problem is, there's some sort of witchery surrounding the place. Only those who see the truth with faithful eyes are getting in there. The power of innocence. It's all in the eyes, you see. Yet blessed Kitava has answered my prayers and sent us just the pair of eyes we need. The ever faithful Justicar Casticus. He's there in the control blocks right now, smiting my people with self-righteous fury. Find him and rip his faithful eyes out. Then I'm sure the good Justicar will be kind enough to see you into the Templar courts. Take a deep breath. Inhale the twin stink of exploitation and oppression. Yes, these pens and cells have been our home away from home since the first card we were brought here by Marseus Lionai, their great hero of the Empire. One of the best slavers they ever had. Not that he was the only one. Captain Sigmund Fairgraves funded many an expedition of the whipped backs of Karui children. High Templar Dominus was only the latest in a long line of men to grow rich by trading in misery. Oriathan wealth was built on Karui poverty. Oriathan gold will forever be stained red by Karui blood. Overseer's Tower, this place is called. And do you know the worst thing about the men who stood here, watching us, cursing us, descending to whip and kick us like curs? They were slaves, like us, willing to turn on their brethren for a bigger cage and a few extra rations. I can't quite put into words what a pleasure it was to take this tower, to rip the greedy eyes from those traitors. Did they see it come? I hope so. With Dominus away in Rayclast, someone had to keep the wheels of oppression turning. Averius was only too happy to take the job. He'd had plenty of practice already, of course. It was Averius who led some of the largest and most crippling raids upon the Ngamakanui and the Ngakuramakoi. It was on his orders that men, women and children were shackled and shipped like cattle to Theopolis. 
and it was Averius who spent 5,000 Kaarui lives building his Templar court and his chamber of innocence, who had wives and daughters scrub their husbands and fathers' blood from the stones so as to preserve their purity. When you meet Averius, feel free to exact a little extra vengeance in the name of Kaarui's suffering. Old Red Eyes. <laughs> He's been quiet for a long time. And just like Kitava and Tsukohama, all of the old gods. Now Innocence has woken up, and with him, power like I've never seen the Templar wield before. It's all right though. We slaves, we've got our own god looking out for us now. I can see him in the eyes of my brothers and sisters, smell him in the blood we've spilled, hear his call in the screams of the fallen. I don't rightly know where the gods have been or what's brought them crawling back, nor do I really care. All I need to know, my friend, is that we're not alone anymore. Well, I know his other names. The Black Spirit, the Cannibal King, the Ravenous One. He was all of those things before Tsukohama slashed out his eyes, before Valakor drowned him in the sea, before Hinekora whipped him and condemned him to immortal darkness. Kitava has learned from the suffering inflicted upon him. Learned what cruelty is from his own flesh and blood. Learned what it means to be a slave. Now he hungers for freedom. Not merely for himself, for all of us who have suffered under whip and shackle. Kitava is the tormented one, destined to rise up from the darkness and banish cruelty from this world. And we, his children, rise with him. There's two parts to the Templar, the grim face and the spotty ass. Out front you've got the Templar courts, usually the last place our Hatungo see if they're stupid enough to preach their craft within a Templar's hearing. Oriath's woodmongers must do a roaring trade with that place. When the wind blows right you can even smell the aroma of barbecue blasphemer from here. The arse end, that's the chamber of innocence. It's where the real earnest believing gets done. Where the young Templar go to pay their respects to God Almighty and get the good sense baptised out of their heads. I've not seen the inside of the chamber myself, but you can feel it from over a block away. Like there's an eye in your gut peering through your insides looking for even the tiniest stain of sin. I tell you, sane people go in one end of that place, ash and apostles come out the other. Watch yourself in there.
An exile returned? How is that even possible? And thank you. Remember, we do this for freedom. Yes? An exile returned. How is that even possible? Rising out of the darkness to claim the souls of our enemies like Hinekora in the stories my mother used to tell me. Well, your divine intervention gave us just the diversion we needed to take this tower. So if you keep doing things like that, then I might have to start believing in the gods again. We'd been planning it for months. Spreading the word, stealing weapons, gathering support. Utula and his followers did most of the dirty work. I just carried a few messages here and there. Should have known I'd end up like this when the real fighting started. In the darkest hour before dawn, that's when we broke our chains. And as many overseer necks as we could wrap our hands around. We took the Panopticon as the sun rose over Theopolis, and that's as far as we got. When you're up against cold steel and colder hearts, there's only so far that anger will take you. Few of us can say that we've devoted our lives to anything greater than ourselves. Can you? I think Utula can. Since the day I met him, I've seen Utula do nothing that wasn't in the service of his people. He's a smart one. He could have escaped. He could have sailed off to Nama Kanui and never looked back. Yet there he stands, our herald of freedom. I might die of this wound, yet I'd be giving but a fraction of what Utula has to honor the Karui way. Remember, we do this- Unlike these assorted ignorami, I'm not surprised to see you here. The beast is dead, all thanks to you, I suppose. I was listening to the beast's death rattles when these lunatics broke in, wrecked the place, and dragged me here to tend to their cuts and bruises. Thankfully, I was able to bring some of my paraphernalia with me. The balance of power is shifting in your favor, O oh murderer of nightmares. If I am in possession of anything that might smooth the transition of governance, don't hesitate to ask. You'll find my terms quite reasonable. Some time ago, I fabricated a device able to sense and amplify the corrupt murmurings of Rayclast, a miasmeter. I listened to those whispers for years, lingering beyond sane comprehension. And then the scream. Such profound agony that my mind was nearly sundered by its percussion. I thought another cataclysm might be upon us. But no, it was you slaying the beast. I was witness to a singularly potent cadence. This corruption, I am convinced that it holds the very key to our human history, and with it, our very existence. Yet without the miasmeter, I'm condemned to deafened ignorance. It remains in piety's level. I gave piety everything, devoted my life to her work. What did that thankless bitch do for me in return? Left me here to polish her beakers while she pursued glory and ray class. Oh, you killed her, did you? Likely as not, you'd have killed me too had I been there. In that case, perhaps we both got exactly what we deserved. A various innocence. I'm not sure there's a great deal of difference. Around the time I heard the beast's mortal scream, the newly appointed High Templar Avarius went through something of a revelation. 
The manner in which he speaks and acts now would indicate that he believes without doubt that he is some earthly embodiment of God. That's faith for you. It'll reduce grown men to the madness of infancy. I can't really fault Jostica Castacus, a man committed heart and soul to upholding the law. Of course, law isn't the same thing as justice, and men like Castacus lack the imagination necessary to make that distinction. Piety and I have devoted ourselves to the betterment of the human condition. As for our methods, Piety had a saying that summed it up nicely. Would you consider the feelings of the stones when constructing a glorious cathedral in the name of God? Casticus supplied us with slaves, mostly Cardui, and I put them to good use. In fact, I believe their participation in my experiments elevated them from squalor to splendor. Our subjects were able to give their otherwise meaningless lives to something greater than themselves. Isn't that what we all want in the end? Utula might appear to conduct himself with honesty and honor, yet has all the telltale signs of a desperate man born of desperate times. As the cornered animal will bite and claw, the cornered man will lie, steal, and murder in the name of survival. It's understandable and deadly if underestimated. In contrast to the company she keeps, Lani has quite an astute mind. I put it down to that Oriathan education she's managed somehow to procure. Whilst quelling whatever resistance you might meet in this noble coup of yours, you'd be well advised to look to Lani for counsel. She'd make the finest of advisors, second only to myself, of course. Some time ago, I fabricated a device. Two tools. Hello.
far too much baggage. Yes.
Thank you. By killing Casticus, you've given us a fighting chance. And about his eyes? I'm sorry you had to do that. Yet although Otula's solution might seem brutal, I've seen Kadui men blinded with a hot poker, simply for looking a fraction too long at an Oriathan lady. Yes, this is war. And just a little revenge, too. Take something, a token of our thanks. a courier for my father's house, I'd cross Cathedral Square a hundred times in a day. On the fairest days, that square would be filled to bursting with Oriath's highborn, come to bask in the sun and each other's glowing nobility. It was a pretty sight, depending on where you stood. I'd be dead right now if not for Violenta. I just hope I live long enough to repay her. And how will I do that? by talking Utula out of his inclination to slice Valenta's throat open. As far as I'm concerned, our pasts are as broken as our chains. For freedom. I simply can't express how wondrous it is to see you. What? No, not you, Exile. The Miasmeter. The hope of humanity lies in this beautiful device and the precious knowledge it shall divulge. Far more useful than an accidental hulk of meat and instinct like yourself. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to discover that your slaying of the beast correlates directly to the strife we must currently suffer. At least you've proved useful enough to return the Miasmeter to me. That deserves some small reward, I suppose. Farewell. What is it? Freedom comes.
Savior. Talakura. Talamoana. If it weren't for Lani, I'd have cut that bitch's throat the moment I met her. But Violenta seems to know her medicine, so she gets to live. Until Lani is better. Then Violenta will answer for her crimes against us. <laughs> so you made just a carcaster can see the light, did you? Couldn't have happened to a nicer fella. Yet now I've an even more charming chap for you to make the acquaintance of. He's over at the Chamber of Innocence, beyond the Templar Court, and I bet he's just dying to meet you. It's High Templar Averius I'm talking about, although he's so filled to the eyeballs with innocence that it's hard to tell where the man ends and the god begins these days. Well, that's good news for us. Kill the man, and you kill the god. And what are the Templar without their god? Lambs in a slaughterhouse. Lani's a pretty tough girl for a half-blood. Her mother was Kairu, but her father, a lord with a nose for island flowers. Despite that Oriathan stain in her blood, Lani risked her life time and time again, slipping us the information that she bore between the lords and ladies of Theopolis. Honestly couldn't have put the pieces of this uprising together without her. And she's a fighter. Struck down two overseers before a third managed to put that scratch on her. Don't worry, it won't slow her down for long. Not Lani. Kuda.